Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Robin Harris of Storage Mojo. And you are probably a guy who's seen more of the storage industry than, than most people. And, and yet, you were actually surprised by something in storage that you found out about at this conference. That's what is, right. what, what is that? Uh, shingled magnetic recording. Now, I've known about shingled magnetic recording for a while, but what I didn't realize is that there's this whole fight going on between uh, Seagate and Western Digital to claim supremacy in a market that we didn't even know, I didn't even know existed, which is this shingled magnetic recording uh, market using SMR drives for cold storage. So, Facebook has a problem. They've got several hundred billion photos. Uh, about 90% of those photos are very rarely looked at. And so, but they tell their users, okay, we're gonna store all your photos and you can access them anytime. And, uh, and of course, users get bored and they don't do it. So they've got a lot of, they've got a lot of photos that never get accessed. So they need a place to put them that's really cheap but that they can access quickly. So it doesn't make sense to put them on tape. They need a disk-based archive. But the problem is, disks use a lot of power. And they don't have that much capacity, you know, relative to what Facebook needs. So uh, this idea for shingled magnetic recording has been kicking around for a couple of years. Garth Gibson, one of the authors of the original RAID paper, professor at Carnegie Mellon uh, has been pushing this uh, and basically the idea is is that existing disks have individual tracks that have gaps between the tracks um, and 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 that limits the aerial density that you can achieve so what shingle magnetic recording does is it uses the fact that right heads write a much wider track than read heads need and so it gets rid of those gaps between tracks and it, it writes a track and then the next, uh, on the next go around, it writes over most of what it just wrote, leaving enough for the read head to read it. And that's what the shingling is because they're, they're overlapping the writes. Uh, and so theoretically, according to Professor Gibson, uh, you can more than double the capacity of an existing hard drive. So if you have a six terabyte hard drive today, it could be a 12 terabyte hard drive tomorrow. Does this create a significant cost savings for creating drives? Absolutely. Uh, basically, you've just doubled the aerial density. You didn't have to add any more equipment. Uh, you know, there's no more you didn't have to change your read heads, your write heads. You didn't have to change the motors. Um, now, for archive use, there are some changes you would want to make. Uh, lubricants today are optimized for running 24 hours a day. But for archive drives, you're going to want to power them down and just leave them turned off for months, maybe even years at a time. Well, you need a different kind of lubricant for really light duty cycles. And there's probably some, I'm sure there's other changes that you'd want to make. Um, but basically, the costs are the same. Once you do the engineering uh, and you start you know, pounding these out, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 million a year, it's gonna be a nice little market. So but these are actually already currently being sold somewhere in the market? Absolutely, and this is part of what surprised me. A couple of months ago, Seagate announced they had sold a million of these drives already. And then I found out at the conference that WD uh, has, uh, uh, Facebook is testing Western Digital Drives at their new Prineville, Oregon cold storage facility that was purpose built for cold storage. 65,000 square feet of uh, data center space for cold storage. And now there are some issues with single magnetic recording that means it's probably not going to be a consumer technology anytime soon. One is it's extremely sensitive to vibration because the tracks are really, really narrow and if, and if it's vibrating while uh, it's writing, uh, it could wipe out data that, oops, you thought you were archiving. And uh, 
so that's that's a problem and in fact the spec that Facebook has written for their cold storage uh, hardware uh, specifies that only two drives are spun up uh, per disk shelf, two drives out of 30, partly to reduce the vibration problem. They also get rid of a couple of fans, which probably reflects the fact they don't need as much cooling, but again, that also reduces the vibration. Um, now, the other thing about it is, is that naturally, it's, it's one thing if you're just doing a write, but if you're going to update any of the data, it starts looking a lot like a read, modify, write cycle on a RAID 5 array, or the kind of stuff you have to do with uh, solid state drives in terms of garbage collection and, you know, emptying out, uh, you know, blocks of data and rewriting them on fresh blocks and dis uh, discarding unused data or stale data. Uh, and, and then, so there's a question and it appears that there's a difference of opinion between Western Digital and Seagate about how to go about this. And Western Digital is going with the dumb drive approach. There's, they're gonna let Facebook engineers figure out how to handle that. And I can see advantages to doing it that way because servers have a lot more resources for handling rewrites uh, than uh, a, a hard drive controller might. On the other hand, putting it into the into the hard drive, which I suspect is the uh, Seagate approach, uh, makes it a lot easier to integrate these with existing infrastructures. So if this stuff does make a move to the enterprise, I would expect that uh, the uh, Seagate approach would be more popular with enterprise users. Um, but anyway, so Seagate is going for kind of a smart drive, WD is going for a dumb drive approach. And uh, the thing that really amazes me though, Jake, is that I, I, I know a lot of people in the storage industry and I talk to a lot of people in the storage industry. And this whole thing has been developing for several years and I haven't heard anything about it. And which makes me realize that this huge potential market is opening up and probably at most a couple of hundred people in the industry are actively involved in this. So you've got the engineering teams at WD and Seagate and then you've got basically the qual teams and integration teams at Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, maybe Rackspace. Uh, just not that many people and it, and it really points to one of the changes that cloud technology is bringing to the marketplace, which is uh, it's not a question of, you know, going out and marketing on, you know, four continents to, you know, tens of thousands of people to get acceptance for this. You just, you know, you've got engineers talking to PhDs uh, and it's a very small group of people and you can be you know, very, very granular uh, and you don't have to involve the media or analysts, shock, uh, bloggers uh, or anything. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, so, uh, Professor Gibson came up with this idea uh, and he's got a lot of prestige in the industry as he should. And he's gotten the drive guys excited. He's gotten the, the cloud vendors excited and it's happening and it's pretty much invisible to everybody else. And I, I find that fascinating. I, th I think that is fascinating because I mean, it's, it's kind of like we're, we're entering a world where uh, all of us are, are kind of consumers of, of drive capability, but uh, in the past, we would have to go out and acquire some drives to use them and now it's somebody else acquired the drives and we're just taking advantage of the technology. Right and the cost savings and all of that stuff. And the, you know, the SLAs that that technology enables for Facebook and for everybody else in the cloud business. Now, I do expect this is gonna migrate into the enterprise at some point, but clearly uh, there's some you know, tricky problems uh, and design trade-offs with this stuff that are being explored right now. 
uh, with this very small audience, and it's going to become a bigger audience uh, over time as people get experience with it. And I w it wouldn't surprise me to see some people leaving, you know, Facebook or Amazon and starting a little cold storage company. I think the other thing that's interesting about this is it sounds like there's potential for there to be uh, maybe something like a governance problem because if there's pictures that I haven't looked at very often, but then all of a sudden I go and look at it and say, hey, I want to delete that. Um, in, a, in a scenario where it's, it's storage that you don't necessarily want to do a whole lot of read and write against because of the complexity, that creates a problem for somebody like a Facebook. Well, it, it could, and I, I don't know what Facebook promises its users around deleting data. Uh, personally, I don't, I don't have a Facebook account. I don't trust those guys <laughs> at all. Because uh, they're in the business of packaging up your data and selling it to the highest bidder. I mean, oh great, what, you know, what could go wrong <laughs> for, for, you know, for you as a user? And uh, so anyway, I, but you're right. I mean, it, it's, it is, uh, I mean, one of the big issues with our digital civilization is the fact that we don't really have any media that lasts any longer than about five years, right? If you've got a book you, and print it on acid-free paper, you can put it on a bookshelf, pull it down in 500 years, and somebody will be able to read it. Uh, but you know, with digital storage, we're, we struggle to get you know, 1% of that time span in digital storage. And so this, uh, you know, so we needed, we need a long-term digital storage medium, and I'm really excited about the Millenniata uh, Thousand Year DVD, which I've written about, but uh, it's a fairly small, you know, it's a few gigabytes, right? This is, we're talking terabytes, and once they're in mass production, I mean, the industry could pump out 100 million of these a year, and, you know, we could have fairly long-term storage for a lot of stuff. Um, and so, so that's exciting, but it's the, this whole, we, our underlying infrastructure, our storage infrastructure for our digital civilization is incredibly rickety. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need something better. And so I applaud what they're doing with SMR drives because it's not like a whole lot better, but it's better and better is good so it might get us to 10 years instead of five yeah right and i'll hey well you know i'll take a doubling that'd be good <laughs> all right well thanks robert it'll be good to see where the where uh, sh shingle magnetic storage goes yeah, absolutely very exciting